will polish straight through if you're not careful. Oh, just working off a little excess nervous energy. We are expecting the imminent arrival of our first foster child. A foster child? Oh, that's good news, Roy. I'm sure you and Haley will make wonderful foster carers. Oh, well, that, that, that is very heartening to hear you say so. I mean, you are a man well-versed in the art of fatherhood. How many children is it now, exactly? Four, including Deirdre's daughter, Tracy. There can't be a teenage problem under the sun that you haven't had to cope with. Oh, don't know about that. You see, with a boy, I, th I think I'd be more prepared for whatever troubles might lie ahead. I I'm not saying that I've experienced all of them personally, understand, but, uh, but at least I'm acquainted with the territory. Whereas a 15-year-old girl, well, I... I always found them something of a, an enigma when I was 15, and now I haven't a clue where to begin. Don't worry, you leave all that to Haley. I'm sure that she'll... I'm sure you'll both manage marvellously. Hiya, oh, Sal. I didn't expect you back so early. I, I got uh, an overnight train. You should have said I'd have come and fetched you. I got a taxi from the station. Oh, it's great to see you. Listen, I was going to go and open up the shop, but uh, it can wait an hour or so. Is, uh, is Sophie here? No. She's at school. Is she all right? Of course she is. She's with her dad now, isn't she? Oh, well, I'm glad you realise it, Danny. Kevin is a dad. He's got every right to be concerned. You think I wasn't? Everybody around here thinks I as good as booby trap that cupboard to fall on Sophie. Don't be silly. Of course they don't. It's just that you've got to be really careful when you've got kids about. Well, maybe somebody should tell Kevin that. Because he didn't think twice before he clapped me in the mouth in front of him, did he? Oh, It'll be hours yet, you know. Mr Hartnell said he was going to bring around after school. Oh, I now know how expectant fathers feel when they're pacing hospital corridors. Oh, still... Everything's ready for her. Should she be early? Yeah. Bed's made, uh, there's clean towels out, and I've put some flowers in the room and a little jar of sweeties. Do you think that's wise? I mean, do we want to be encouraging her to suck sweeties after she's cleaned her teeth of an evening? Well, your mum's been taken into hospital for the next few days. All she'll want from us is tender loving care, not dental care. Yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm sure you're right. I'm just a bit nervous. It's the waiting. Mm. I want a word with you. Well, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Mum always said it was rude to talk with my mouthful. Never mind your breakfast. You tell me how come the cell at the medical centre's got damp. It hasn't. No, oh, calling our local doctor a liar, are we? I reckon a man who's qualified to diagnose piles can spot damp in his cellar, don't you? Well, he shouldn't have any. Well, there is. And you did the work, so you sort it out. Now. Oh, morning. What morning, Rita? I came in to say how sorry I am about that disgraceful scene on the street last night. There's nothing that hasn't happened a hundred times before around here. Yeah, not with you dragged into it, I'm sure. I'm, I'm so sorry. Well, no wonder Amanda was upset. Divorcing her mother. Are you sure about this? Well, it's the only way forward I can see. I, I thought you might just understand. But divorce is bad enough, no matter who's involved. But divorcing Isabel in her condition... I'm sorry, it just seems such a betrayal. Yes, but I hoped you would see it as, as just the opposite. As what, exactly? Well, um, I don't know. It's a way of putting things right, a, a, a new beginning for us. Can you get those for me? Yeah. Oh, Sal didn't know you were back. Yeah, first thing this morning. Mm. Appendicitis catching, is it? What? Nothing wrong, is there? Danny and Kevin. Oh, you heard. Danny told me that Kevin punched him in the street in front of the girls. He did. I saw it. What on earth has got into Kevin? Whatever Danny might have done, there's no excuse for fists. And never in front of Rosie and Sophie. It's beyond me, Gail. I mean, what happened? Did Danny provoke him? Oh, look, Sal, I don't want to get involved. I just want to know, was, was Danny asking for it? No, he wasn't. Kevin was right out of order. Well, 
Nice damp, all right. You want to get that fixed, mate? Yeah, and guess who's going to be doing the fixing? No, I'm gone, Doc. Me and my lads did the work we were contracted to. The council came round, they inspected it, and they passed it. Yeah, the past doesn't interest me. It's what you're going to do now that I want to know. Nothing. It's not my responsibility. If you want something doing, I suggest you talk to Dougie Ferguson. Yeah, forget Ferguson. I'll talk to the council. What's that, 15 mil, Sam? Yeah. <clears throat> I think you've got a visitor. Oh, you back then? Yep. You, uh, better go and brew up some. Yeah, sure. Well, looks like Sophie's gonna be fine now. No ill effects, thank goodness. Is that why you hit Danny? By way of celebration? I shouldn't have hit him. Not with the kids there. But top of the class, Kevin. You're right, you shouldn't have hit him. Why did you? Look, I'm not the one turning the house into a death trap for him, are I? Please, it was an accident. Oh, and that makes it all right, does it? Look, he should be more careful while Rosie and Sophie's there. And so should you. They have seen enough of what Fisk can do, thanks to Greg Kelly. They don't need you showing them that Dad can do it too. Look, I've said I'm sorry, but he still need you taking down a peg or two. And maybe he's not the only one. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Well, this isn't about Sophie getting hurt, is it? That's just an excuse. Look, I don't understand what you're talking about. This is about scoring points. What? Well, right now, Kevin, you're two points down. Cos I'm gonna go and pick the girls up from school, all right? <sighs> Oops! Oh, sorry, Fred. Wasn't looking where I was going. Oh, it'll be that son of yours on your mind. Bullseye. Have you come up with a plan of action yet? No, I haven't. First time in my life I feel like my hands are tied. All I can do is wait. After 12 years, a man's patience can grow mighty thin. Yeah, you can say that again. I don't even know if the lad had want anything to do with me, though. I mean, I'm a stranger to him, aren't I? I know. It's hellish difficult ground to recover being an absentee parent. At one time, I wondered if our Ashley would ever talk to me again. Well, look at us now, closer than the cobbles on this street. Must have been the same with you and your Mark. No, Mark was different. Well, any old. This lad of yours had him but 12 year old. 12 year missed, I grant you, but he's far from grown up, isn't he? You still have an old life's worth to look forward to together. Yeah. Hope you're right. I know it's the right thing to do. I'm convinced of it. I mean, it's fairest for all round. For Isabel, for. Amanda, Gregory, and for you. You don't have to divorce Isabel, to be fair to me. But I think I do. Well, you're wrong. You're doing this because of the pressure your family are putting on you over me. I mean, you can't think that divorcing Isabel is going to do anything at all to heal the rift with Amanda and Gregory. How are you going to feel in a year's time when you've divorced Isabel and lost your children for good because of me? I pray that that won't happen. But it could. Rita, I've thought about this long and hard. It's not a, a spare-of-the-moment decision. Abandoning Isabel is something I, I would never do, but she left me long ago. I see. Rita, please, please try and just understand. I know it's hard on Gregory and Amanda to come to terms with my decision, but in all honesty, their life isn't affected by Isabel the way mine is. They can move on. I can't. I'm... I'm chained to the past. I don't want that. I want a future. A future with you. So? Have you got a problem with me finishing a meal today or something? Well, if you'd come and told me how you'd got on at the medical centre, I wouldn't have to go chasing you around now, would I? So? So what? You already know there's damp in the cellar. So what are you going to do about it? Well, it's not down to me, is it? I only did what I was told to, as contracted by you. Yeah, I contracted you to do a proper job. No, you asked for a cut price job. There's a difference. I asked for no such thing. Did you or did you not ask me to cut costs? Yes, And but... then cut them again? 
<laughs> you see, you can mix more and more sand with your cement, Dougie. But sooner or later, all it's going to be fit for is building castles on the beach. I always knew you were a cowboy. Well, you never complained about the bell, did you? All right, then. How have you left it? Well, I said he'd have to talk to you. Yeah, fair enough, I suppose. If we move quickly, we can maybe keep this under wraps. Well, I doubt it. He said he didn't want to talk to you when he got on the phone at the council. What?! I know what I said, Susan, but you can't blame me for wanting to see my son. It's been 12 years. I am not getting impatient. No, 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 look, uh, OK, we do everything on your terms. Yes. Yes. Goodbye. I take it she didn't like being pushed. She said Adam wasn't ready yet. When will he be ready, Mike? When he turns 18? I don't know. Perhaps she's scared. Of what? Well, if she's been telling him all these lies all these years about how I walked out on him when he was a little boy, how do you think he's going to react when he finds out it wasn't like that at all? She walked out on me. Mike, if she's been filling his head with nonsense, you've got to make sure he knows fact from fiction. God knows what she's been telling him about you. All right, little D, that'll do her. Sounds a bit on the cammy side to me, that. Come again? That rattling. A lot of cam wear, I'd say. Yeah, I know what you mean. I just can't believe what I'm hearing, that's all. You never told me your mum was a mechanic, David. You are joking, are you? What are you doing in your school uniform, messing around with cars? Well, I'm not doing out messy. Uniform off and then homework. Mum? Hey, the apprentice always does what his boss tells him. Go on. Alright, see you. See you later. Oh, I'll have to remember that one. So come on, man. How come you could spot a cami engine at ten paces? Ah, oh, well, that was my first husband. He was a mechanic. He used to own a garage. Only Kevin owns it now. No. So I knew all about cami engines and all sorts of things while you were still in nappies. <laughs> uh, oh. Hello. Are you going now? To see Isabel? Yes, it's, it's strange, isn't it? Although I know she won't understand a word I'm saying. It still makes me nervous. Rita, I'm just dreading it. You don't have to do this. Yes, I do. Bye. Well, this is very nice, Dougie, thanks. Not at all, Audrey. You can't treat your friends now and again when you've got your own pub. What's the point in having a pub, eh? I like the sound of that. Cheers. Anyway, I was hoping to catch you for a quick word. Why is that? Uh, the thing is, there's a bit of trouble brewing over at the medical centre. Really? What sort of trouble? Well, it's, um, it's delicate. Dr Ramsden's asked me to check on a problem that he's having over there. Structural, you understand. Oh, my Lord, structural? You mean the place isn't safe? No, 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 no. It's nothing like that. It's perfectly sound. No, he's... He's asked me to check on a problem with the damp in the cellar. It's nothing that can't be taken care of, I'm sure. Well, I should hope so. I mean, it's hardly hygienic, is it, in a medical sense, sir? The thing is, I'm concerned, Audrey. You know how word gets around, how it echoes in the corridors of power. The point is, Audrey, whatever's gone wrong, I don't want the council getting the wrong idea. It isn't my fault. You take on subcontractors and you... you trust that they're going to do a proper job. I see. So, uh, this gin and tonic would be your idea of lobbying, would it? Well, I wouldn't put it as crudely as that. Right. And this subcontractor, I take it you mean Steve MacDonald? Yeah. Well, Dougie, I am sorry. But in that case, you deserve everything you get. Been talking to Susan, have you? Uh, not today, no. But she is my daughter, so you can't complain if I do. I'm not complaining. I just hope you haven't been twisting the knife. What? Putting ideas in her head as to why she shouldn't see my son. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Because if you have, Barlow, I promise you, there will be trouble. Big trouble. Don't worry, Jackie. Everything's going to be fine. Right, right, there we go. Hi. Well, here we are, Roy and Haley. This is Jackie. Oh, Jackie, welcome. Very pleased to meet you. 
Well, what a place to stay, eh? Right over the top of a cafe. Hmm? Yeah. What about you, the jacket? The flats in Myrtle Street. Oh, oh, oh I, I know them. I always think you get a very good impression of the historical relationship between Weatherfield's industrial and, and residential development from up there. Uh, I don't know. I just can see millions of views. That's if glue factory had stopped up. Are you hungry, Jackie? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, do you want me to show you your room, then? Sure. Oh, right, it's this way. I'll have me back. It's OK, come on, Jackie. Uh, listen, Jackie, I'm sure you'll like it here with Roy and Hayley, but you know where I am if you need me. Yeah. OK. It's all a bit strange for her. <laughs> so that makes three of us. Oh, don't worry. You'll get on fine. Listen, I'll call you tomorrow, all right? Thank you very, very much. I don't think you can really imagine what this means to Hayley and me. Same again. Yes, please. Oh, dear, Kenneth. This business me has told me it's cut Michael to ribbons, it has. Oh, he's enrolled you on his campaign wagon, has he? Well, if it's a campaign, then it's a just one. A man has a right to know his own son. Well, that's a matter for the boy's mother. And you're a father. Put yourself in Michael's shoes. How would you feel being denied the right to see your own flesh and blood? Being denied even knowledge of his existence? Well, I didn't know about Adam for 12 years myself, so I understand he'll feel frustrated. But I think it was Baldwin who drove Susan away in the first place. I can't say I feel an awful lot of sympathy. Oh, yeah? No Maxine tonight? No. She's feeling a bit low. Oh, nothing wrong, is there? Nah, she's just depressed about not being pregnant. I think she felt really sure this time. Oh, she mustn't get stressed over it. They don't take this the wrong way, Ashley, but Maxine strikes me as the kind of woman who, once she's set her mind on something, that's it, she wants it right now, this minute. Well, that's Max all right. Well, nature's not like that. I'm getting wound up about getting pregnant, well, can be counterproductive, if you'll excuse the pun. Yeah, but what do we do? There's no talking to a man. Oh, she's got to stop obsessing. Take a mind off it. Has she got any hobbies? Only my clothes. Well, perhaps you can uh, find uh, some new ones. No, nah, it won't work. She'll think I've gone off the idea about having a baby and want to distract her. They should go for it if you told them all. I don't think it's worth coming to the surgery for. Well, come round and tell her. Why don't you and Charlie come round ours one night for a bite to eat? We've got a lovely bit of romping shop at the moment. Oh, I don't know. Hey, why not? Bet you're glad Sally's back, aren't you? I'll say. Oh, you're not the only one, I bet. I bet uh, Rosie and Sophia miss their mama. Still, it gave Kevin a chance to look after them, I suppose. And it'll be easier in the shop, won't it? Now you're not on your own. Yeah. Well, let her take your coat off. Or did you tell her to clout you before she even put her bags down? What are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Any chance you get to make me look bad in front of Sally, you're in there. Hey, you don't need my help on that score. Not while you're belting other blokes in front of your kids. Yeah, well, there's angry one. And you'd be angry too if someone had hurt one of your kids. Oh, they practically are my kids. Oh, you what? Kevin, no! Rosie and Sophie, my kids! Mine and Sally's! No, you might have my wife and my house, but you'll never have me kids! Just cut it out, Kevin. Leave him alone. Hey, hey! What's going on? Nothing. She's been in there an awful long time. Do you think she's all right? Oh, don't worry. She's probably just settling in. Maybe having a little cry. I know I would. Oh, dear. Well, do you think you should go and check on her? Maybe uh, comfort her, perhaps? I don't know. Maybe she's better left on her own for a little bit. Why, you Jackie, love? Is everything all right? Yeah, lovely, folks. All right, well, yeah. Your tea's nearly ready. <laughs> We're having sausage, beans and chips. <laughs> we thought you might like that. To be honest, I'd rather not. Oh. It's just that... I'm not eating chips and fried stuff. I'm trying to diet. But you're not fat. Still, you're right. Chip on the shoulder is one thing, but it really shows when you get a portion on your hips, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how about a nice salad instead, then? In fact, I might have one and all. Uh, do you want some help? Oh, no, 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 you're right. You've got much time for a bit. <sighs> Charlie, what's up? I'm fed it with flaming Kevin. Why, what's happened? You want to carry on living here? There's one thing we've got to get sorted out right now. Danny, I don't know what you're talking about. This is our house now. Kevin doesn't come over that step, all right? Oh, not this again. I mean it, Sal. But what about Rosie and Sophie? They want to see him. Take him round to his. But that man does not set foot in this house again. It's either that or we're out of here.
Hello, Isabel. I brought you some flowers. How are you today? Now, I've got something to tell you. I don't know whether you can hear me. I don't suppose you can, but if you can, I pray that you'll understand and forgive me. Do you know, I, I can still see you the day we first met. You were so beautiful and so elegant. There's a lot of you in Amanda, so much so, it sometimes it almost hurts. Gregory's grown up to be a fine man. I mean, he's a much, much better man than I am. So, despite our ups and downs, we, we didn't do badly, did we? But where are we now? Where are you? See, I've lost my Isabel, and you're never coming back to me, are you? That's why I have to do what I'm doing. I must find my own life again, and perhaps marry again. Forgive me. Thank you.